most uh, uh, valuable things that, I, that I've ever learned from him was to not approach Jennifer before she had at least one cup of coffee. <laughs> well, I took that uh, advice to heart and I probably trumped it and I didn't make sure she has two before I had two. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Walt's an extremely talented X's and O's guy. I, I know this because we talk strategy for every sport that we that we encounter, whether it's at a basketball game or whether it's about baseball at lunchtime. Um, and he, he knows how to be successful on the field and in the classroom and in the front office. He's very reflective and he tackles problems with a lot of passion. Um, we, we all know that his ballpark is one of his great passions, and it is just a tremendous park. I mean, if you think about it, you know, I've been to a lot of the parks in West Michigan, and some of them have more bells and whistles. They have more brick and mortar, they have more fancy banners, but there will not be a park that you play that has a, a better surface, because that's what's important to Walt. He says you can't control the outcome. You can't control if you win the game, if you have your good stuff on the mound, but you can control the way your park looks, the way your field looks the way you look, the, 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 the way that you hustle down 90 feet, the way that you um, play the game. And that's what Walt's all about. It's not the end product, it's what you do um, during the game. He also attacks blackjack with the same passion. <laughs> now, there's a few people here who have had the opportunity to play with Walt. And I've had the opportunity to play with him in Vegas twice. And that is a sight to see. It's a whole new man. <laughs> he throws an ambition to the wind, and he becomes a card shark, right in front of your eyes. Steph and I met Walton Joan uh, last spring break at, at, at uh, Encore, which is one of the nicest um, hotel casinos on the Strip, and that's his home, home turf. And so we wanted over from our budget hotel to his home turf. And, uh, and we played together a little bit, and after we had a few cocktails, he stayed focused and I started hounding the dealer for some comps. <laughs> Can I get a meal? You know, there's nice restaurants here. And uh, he put up with it when it was a sight to see and uh, one, of our, one of our favorite nights in Vegas, so I'll cherish that, that memory. Another thing that you might not know about Walt that I, that I think it's, it's worth mentioning here is um, I feel that he has a publishable philosophy of baseball book. He has spent a ton of time on this manual and he gives it to all his assistant coaches, and it has step by step by step process for everything you need to do to run a program, including mental, the mental aspect of the game, um, all the X's and O's, with rationale on why you do a bunk coverage like this as opposed to doing it like that, or why you run the bases like this as opposed to doing it like that. It's something that I cherish. I, I wouldn't have been able to coach without it. Um, and so uh, I, I think that goes to show his level of detail that he likes to um, approach his life with. Um, I call it the coaching Bible. Um, and although uh, recently we've been able to start to transition him from the H drive and through copies <laughs> to um, Google Docs, and I think he has everything electronic now, and uh, we'll get it on his H drive form before he leaves, so that'll be another challenge that we go through. Um, but with joking aside, there's three things that I think are the most important things that I've learned from Walt, and uh, I think that these three things are shaping who I am, um, the person that I am, um, both here at school and at home. First, uh, was what I, I learned from Walt was seek first to understand. It's something that he says a lot, and he says that in reference to the idea that we work with a mother and father's most precious commodity, the thing that they care the most about. So when we have one who maybe has misbehaved, or who has you know kind of strayed from the right direction? When, when I'm talking to that parent, he has taught me to seek first to understand that this is the most important thing to them, and we need to remember that. And uh, before I became a parent, it was more difficult to do. But now that I am a parent, I exactly I can see exactly where he's coming from, and, and it helps me to navigate some of those difficult conversations that I have on a I won't say daily basis, but uh, often. <laughs> The second one goes hand in hand with that, and it's uh, treat people with dignity and respect. When dealing with students and athletes who have done something wrong or gotten in trouble, Walt well, always treats them with a tremendous amount of respect. Um, and you can imagine doing some sort of search for tobacco or alcohol or um, a 
or some kind of drug paraphernalia. Um, Walt has just shown me how to do that with dignity and respect, which is sometimes a difficult thing. But it usually leads to the, the proper outcome. When I'm ready to give up on somebody, Walt will want to have one more conversation with them and, and find out what we needed to know. This happened again at our graduation, you might not know, but we received a tip that there were some uh, balloons that were going to be brought out to the commencement. And we, I went up to the group and I started talking to people saying I need to have those, uh, those beach balls and one coughed one up and we knew we had three more left and so I went to another group and I talked to that group and finally got one more to cough up and I about exhausted all of my tricks and Walt just took the mic in front of all the seniors who were in line ready to go out to do the commencement and he just appealed to their human nature and said imagine if some one of your classmates was having their name called off and there was a beach ball being thrown distracting a parent or a family or a grandparent how that would you know really diminish the ceremony and within two seconds, here comes a beach ball, here comes a beach ball, and I'm like, that was a masterpiece. You know, I don't know if there's anyone else could have done that on these kids trying to get a last frame for Walt. And that's the kind of relationship that he had with the students and uh, an example that he's been to, to myself and others. And lastly, and probably the most important, is uh, Walt has taught me about the importance of family. We talk about family a lot. I feel like Walt has um, been a part of my daughters being born and being a part of our lives and he plays hide and seek with them when they come in and visit and they're always looking for coach walt they want to talk with coach walt and uh he's shown me how to be a loving father to to girls and the less than just children in general and uh, he just speaks so highly of his daughters and wants so much to spend more time with them and be there for them and i'm so happy that he's able to do that but every time we talk i feel like he relives some of the stories from raising his girls and he helps mentor me and guide me through those tough times and is just a, a, a person who can listen and, and give that advice. I figure there's no better example um, of raising fine, successful, beautiful women than Walt, so I'm going to appreciate that time we've had together. So I'm closing. I hope that in retirement, Walt, you receive all that you deserve, which is true joy and happiness. And on behalf of the students and the athletes and the colleagues, I thank you for the tremendous impact you've had on all of us. Thank you. Ho, ho, ho! day for the last couple of weeks, and this has been a very difficult time for me. Uh, Joe is right, Shannon is right, Dean is right. I'm extremely emotional, and I'm not ashamed of that. I already cried once in front of everybody. I'm not sure I'm willing to do it again, but um, listen, uh, thank you, Shannon and Joe and Dean. I don't deserve that. I'm sure of it, but thank you. I knew I was in trouble when Carrie and Becky walked up here. <laughs> you talk to one copy machine, you get right <laughs> What's up for that? <laughs> so honestly, I have no remarks planned. I've talked to many of you at the end of our evaluation meetings. I tried to say sort of a proper goodbye. Um, it's 36 years, it's 12 here. It seems like I've been here forever. This is where I belong. It's very difficult to say what I want to say, so I'll probably, I'm not going to say anything other than I'll try to get to you and give you a proper goodbye. Um, so thank you. Whatever I gave you, I got back tenfold. Thank you. Mm -hmm.